Hi, Maxine. How are you doing? Love the colors you have in those paintings behind you. <laughs> yeah, this is my mom's like art office. It's just like covered in like art. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Kind of fun. These are I made these in like high school. I just uh, when I came over, I was like, I've seen those for years. But yeah, they're pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, I actually miss like projects like this. You know, like high school was so good yeah. for them, and I'm like, where are they? Like again, like I, sometimes I just need like yeah. an artist, like a piece of art to work on. But um, yeah. I'll I show you what I yeah, worked on yesterday. This is a drawing I made of a samurai. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I'm going to redo it because the proportions aren't quite right, but uh, it's kinda, it was pencil. Yeah. You know. I like it. I kind of like that it's kind of like the proportions are off. It makes it like make me look twice. <laughs> 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 That's so fun. Were you just like motivated just to join? Did you just have the impulse to do it? No, I, I, I was actually, we're, you know, I'm studying Eido, the art of drawing the sword. And um, that is a picture of our, the founder of our school from 300 years ago. Oh, wow. The proportions are a little bit taller, but right. uh, but to get those effects of the cloth and everything and the expression. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we're having an opening ceremony of our new dojo in Tokyo on Sunday. So mm -hmm. I was asked to make a, a painting of him, but I decided to make a drawing instead. So I'm, I'm going to finish it today, get it framed and bring it in on Sunday. That's awesome. <laughs> hang in the dojo, awesome. yeah. <laughs> I love that. Do you make time to practice your art? Do you like consciously put it in your schedule? How do you? Uh, no, well, I, I try to, I find the easiest way for me to do that is to teach. Because yeah. if I teach, then uh, I, I have to do it and I have to engage. Plus, yeah. I have deadlines for um, calligraphy every month. We have to, you know, and then we have uh, exhibitions that we have to s submit artwork for. So the, the deadlines keep me Keep me honest. <laughs> Keep practicing. Yeah, that's so interesting that you said I need to teach in order to stay engaged. Yeah. Um, same, actually. I do. I just like when I'm about to like, I'm like, oh, I need some like accountability. Okay, better launch something. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. You, you're more likely to do something for somebody else than you are for yourself. That's, you know. <laughs> that's so true. That's so, so, so and, true. And then the accountability, having a deadline or somebody's expecting you to do it. And you want to do it anyway. But if you didn't have that, chances are, uh put it off yeah. yeah totally that's so true it's so easy to not serve yourself <laughs> but that's <laughs> good that kind of like helps that kind of reinforces what we're all trying to do with our offers right yeah and yeah both by like putting them exactly. back to the yeah well, you know, i had the same strategy for um uh for writing books the books that i've written when i've written about 20 books you know in, in japanese and english and mm -hmm. and i always write the book that i want to read so uh, I, I actually <laughs> end up researching. Okay. So. I love that. Hi, Jurgen. Yeah. Uh, what was the last one you wrote? Or just Hi, uh, Max. Hi, Hi Will. Hi, Hi Jurgen. <laughs> oh, a bit of a leg. How are you going? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe how busy I am, though. <laughs> yeah, I think all of us are drowning a little bit, eh? <laughs> yeah. Is it, is, it, is it good busy? Is everyone good busy? <laughs> um, well, I was just reflecting on that a little bit, and I think there's, um, I need to make some space for some more good busy uh, yeah. incoming revenue stuff. Because um, there's a lot of, I, I was just looking through some email this morning and I thought there's about 300 emails in my inbox and that's only that's only about 10 only about 10 percent of my emails get in my inbox yeah wow. the rest are in sort of read later and stuff and I thought <laughs> I'm, I might have to do a mass delete and just hope that there's nothing important there if there isn't something important people will send it again yeah oh my gosh I hear you I you're gonna if it makes you feel any better I was I, I'd kind of gotten used to it and think about it my daughter was looking over my shoulder at my um I was checking my iPhone she said you've got 10,000 unread emails <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I I see them but I I I'll read it later yeah. that if it's important you know same <laughs> Same. I've got like 15,000 in my little blurb and I'm like, nah, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't I turn off all the notifications so I don't I don't get get to see it until I go in there to look for something. No. That's 
<laughs> and often it'll be somebody will say, I sent you an email. Did you get that email? You know, it'll be a conversation <laughs> that I need to have some information. And I'll go in there and I'll, oh, God, look at all those emails in there. I've seen, I've seen people declare, publicly declare email bankruptcy, send out a mass email saying, I'm deleting yeah. everything in my inbox. If there's anything I missed or anything important, I'm starting fresh as of Monday. And that's yeah. it. And it's like, wow, I like that I, email bankruptcy. I had considered, I had seriously considered that, Todd. Yeah, that's not bad. I feel like, again, if we do that as a group, <laughs> yeah, everybody like, does it. Create a it's actually a good thing, thing for everyone to do like on New Year's Day, like just start yeah. fresh. Like, and, and and you just say to people, if I miss something, I'm sorry, but if, if it's really important, please resend it to me. Hmm. Yeah, I've got yeah. um, I, somebody gave me a tip. I uh, thought so it was really good because every now and then I'll go in and I'll pull up a bunch of things and, and I'll just do an unsubscribe campaign. So I'll spend 10 wow. minutes or 15 minutes going and unsubscribe from a bunch of things. And then somebody said, no, that's not the way you do it. What you do is as you see things that you no longer want to receive, you move them into an unsubscribe folder and then you get your assistant to go yeah. in and take care of all of those in one hit you know on her work calendar so i started doing that but um and i'm sure we've unsubscribed from about 300 things in the last week but it doesn't seem to have made any impact on the volume of emails yeah that's the disappointing thing well sometimes they don't actually unsubscribe you they just keep sending it it's really Mm. yeah well then i just do block sender that's like if that happens i just do block in fact i do I'm yeah. putting them in folders. I just do a, blo- a junk or block sender, and it goes into that folder. And then yeah. you could always, like you said, have some, an assistant or someone else could unsubscribe to them. But worth, worst case, at least they automatically just go in there as long as yeah. it's yeah. nothing, not from someone that uh, that you are waiting yeah. to hear from. Yeah, I, well, I've got a system. I think it's Sanebox that I use that has this black hole facility, mm-hmm. and that's the same. And they basically, as soon as it recognizes that email, it just auto deletes it it just vanishes <laughs> you never see it and yeah you know, so i do that when people don't unsubscribe me after requesting unsubscribe yeah. i've um i heard an argument like we as as uh, recipients of people's emails when we subscribe we have no rights to decide the frequency of which we receive the emails the person who's sending it has all the power um and the conversation was all about reversing that power how can we decide the frequency of which we'd like to receive something versus give the power to the person that they can send us any time, anything, anytime, you know, when they get their email, they can just flood you. Yeah. Uh, and, well, and- some of mine, and I haven't, I haven't done much email marketing recently, but when I do it, I, you know, my first email, when somebody signs up for a lead magnet, my first email opens up with, I, I invite you to unsubscribe right now. Here's the link. Yeah. So I just make it really easy. And I said, you know, you've subscribed to this because you signed up for X, Y, Z. Um, if you no longer want to receive them, if this isn't adding value, here's the unsubscribe button. So make it really easy to unsubscribe. And the thing about that is it's it's a relationship thing. So I don't want to be bombarding people that are not interested yeah. with stuff because I don't want them to have thousands of emails that are just yeah. cluttering up their inbox and hiding hiding the important stuff. Yeah. Um, well, I've, so, never, I've never had an email list until just literally just now when I just launched my ToddChurches.com website so i basically had my it guy harvested every email that i've ever gotten in and and all the email addresses and we sent out we've been doing it in bunches of like 500 a day over the last two weeks so i have emails going out to literally everyone who has ever emailed me um and just one time just one time just saying this Mm -hmm. is a one-time email if you want to subscribe here it is if not you won't hear from me again so it's interesting yeah. is I've gotten some really like hostile email responses. You better take me off this list and this and that. And it's like I'm some spammer. I like said, this is just a one-time thing. Yeah. Part of the, you know, this is yeah. opt-in yeah. only. If you want to subscribe, here's the link. If not, you know, you'll never you know, hear from me again. If it's any consolation, I've had, you know, those emails where I've opened up with, here's the unsubscribe link. And it's actually the biggest text on the whole yeah email page here's the unsubscribe link if you don't want to receive this and then i've gone on and said here's why you're receiving this and here's the stuff i've got for you here's the value in this email i've actually had responses to that email saying how dare you send me spam emails and immediately remove me from your list (laughs) the email opened up with here's the unsubscribe (laughs) anyway so uh so what's have you uh what's your new brain dating maxine 
Oh, we're still, well, we've got over a hundred names now to choose from, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which was actually a really great lesson in disguise, right? At first we were so bummed that we got this like cease and desist lawsuit letter. Mm. Um, but then we just went to our community and asked them, you know, for their thoughts and it was yeah. just engagement. Yeah. And I was like, that's how people, this has been a flip for me, right? Don't just give information, ask. Yeah, you know, yeah. Contribution and 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 I felt like that was I just remembered how powerful it was to give people an opening to contribute to your idea as much as you were telling them about it. Yeah. Um yeah. and and again the follow-ups like we so everyone that we got like 70 emails, like probably like 30-ish Facebook messages, and then to follow up with those emails, we just like thank them, added their name to a list, and we'll share the list there. It's hilarious, like this is very creative. Yeah. Um, but we said, Hey, like thank you so much for your submission. Here's a link to our next event and and that actually was way better selling the event than anything you know than yeah. just talking at them so I was like okay yeah. like new lesson um like how can you write emails that but then how do you do it in a way that you can manage it you know I couldn't do that so so often because I kind of replied to everyone one-on-one -on -one, but um, it was a reminder. I was like, oh, okay. Number one, um, I'm now calling it brain sourcing instead of crowdsourcing. So mm -hmm. I was like, let's use the brains for advice. Um, and I think if we all, I'm going to play with this a little bit more, but why not instead of making an offer and selling it to someone, be like, here's my offer. What would you want to see about it? What would you pay for this? What would you mm -hmm. add? Um, opening up that door to contribute. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. is maybe a, a new avenue I kind of want to go. So just rem reminding myself that that's important. And then, um, yeah, just uh, using, using that contribution as like, first let them add, then ask them to, to, to join. Yeah. Um, so oh, I don't know. I just joined the National Speakers Association and the New York yeah. chapter, and I, we had our first the first meeting the other day, and the guest speaker was Jeff Hoffman, who created Priceline and Booking.com. Mm. So he was oh. talking about, you know, his model, about how, you know, how you know unsold seats, just like the airline model. You know, once the plane leaves, you can't sell those seats. Similarly with hotels or whatever. So, yeah. I mean, people aren't doing that with like training or with other things. We all have offerings, yeah. and it's like, what are people willing to pay? Like, I, yeah. I asked my my friend Mark Levine attended the last brain dating one, and I said, what what do you, what was that worth? Like, what was that session worth to you? Because I saw you were pricing at like thirty, and yeah. he said, you know, for me, I really enjoyed it, and I would have paid. Not that it wasn't valuable, just in, yeah. in the overall scheme of things. He's yeah. like, if that was $10, I would have been like, that was a great, you know, yeah. amount spent. He said, yeah. for $30, that's, that's in another category. So I'm just wondering yeah. if you got any other feedback. I, I, the packaging, when you did the, the biggest discount yeah. for the year and everything, I thought that yeah. was very fair. Yeah. Um, the thing is, people will say, all right, of those, if there, what am I available at those times? Or like, how many will I actually be able, able to attend of those? Yeah. So if I pay... An average, if it averages out to ten dollars a piece, then it's worthwhile. Even if I miss it, it's not the end of the world. But yeah. the thirty, so just, that yeah. was my. So it's just interesting just to pass along that Good. feedback from someone who just had never attended attending for the first time. Yeah, and actually, my second, maybe I should do that as an email. Hey guys, for those who have experienced, what would you pay? Because I remember when I was doing my masters, I kind of studied the what would you pay model, and yeah. Coldplay was really famous for coming out with a CD and letting everyone have it for free, and then asking after you listen to it, I want you to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And we analyzed the results. Um, and it was a while ago, but so many, some people paid a hundred dollars for it. Some people paid nothing and it averaged out to more than what they would have done if they charged out for a regular CD. But, um, yeah, I was trying to think about how to, how to price it. And I was like, okay, it's 90 minutes. Um, one of my friends said price it like a yoga class, like a yoga class is a 90 minute session where you get to do something. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I like the year bundle because that gets the commitment and allows us to theme it. Um, and it would be on the 1st and the 15th every month for the year um, at, at two different times. So it hit the different time zones. Um, and then I'd be able to showcase the theme so people could pick and kind of choose. Yeah. Um, but I still think I have to play with it. And I think maybe now I'll ask, like, what are you willing to pay? And we're actually looking at technology on Pick My Brain to, to allow for a pay what you want. Or uh, receive this service, and then after you receive it, how much do you want to pay for it now? Well, one um, of the things they found with in New York, a lot of the museums are that that model. They yeah. found that pay what you want. They tried pay what you want and pay yeah. what you can. When yeah. they did pay what you can, people paid more. Yeah. Because they said I can't afford twenty. Like I only want to pay a dollar, but I can 
you yeah. know, it actually is almost like the guilt thing. People say, I can't afford this, and that yeah. will supplement a child or a family that couldn't afford to pay more. So what you want versus what you can, so, yeah. or pay what you wish. That was another. So they played around with all the different, so that, again, like there's no one answer, but it's just interesting to yeah. see what people respond to. Yeah, um, I think it's got to be wrapped in a story, though. I think I like the, um, what Todd said there about the pay what you can, and then, you know, that tied in with something, you know, this could support somebody i don't know how you do that mm. you know and still maintain your own revenue because the risk with just going straight pay what you wish or um, leaving it up to the person is that if that's your only offering you're kind of devaluing it to some yeah. degree because yeah. even even if the total revenue coming in averages out to be more than what it is otherwise the fact that a lot of people are, are paying under what it really is valued um, devalues it in everybody's eyes so it's well, kind of, you've got like, to find that balance yeah. like yeah. some of the museums will have pay what you can on fridays right so you can have like mm. one a month or one a quarter that's a pay what you can so yeah. that way it'll tell you like if you know 200 people show up with for pay what you can but only yeah. 30 show up for the fee okay. that tells you that there's a demand but there's either they can't afford it or they don't Feel yeah, the value is there. Yeah, I mean pricing, right? Value pricing. Yeah. Whatever you will, what do you think? There's also the wimpy model. I'll gladly pay you Tuesday <laughs> for a hamburger today. <laughs> <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't appeal to vegans, though. So I, I, I know. Know. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, same thing with the pricing of like any of our master classes or webinars. Yeah. Like, there's no one right answer. It really is like, mm -hmm. you know. So it's almost That's like crazy. you have to. I, what I'm finding is if you price something high or ha what you would ideally like to get, and then you could discount it because you could always yeah. say that was a one-time discount or for the first okay. yeah. 30 people who sign up, but yeah. then it, 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 it kind of, what they call it, anchors, anchors. Yeah. It anchors that price at this yeah. is what the value is that you're getting as long as, yeah. it, you know. Yeah, yeah. But not, not like Macy's where they say, oh, this sport jacket is worth a thousand, but we're selling it for $99 today. So <laughs> <Yeah. like, laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How does that work? Yeah, yeah. it's tricky because I mean, half of me wants to just give it away for free and let it totally because my, my mission is to make knowledge more accessible, right? Um, but then our whole mission is also like anything that's free is not valued. Um, mm. You got to put a price on it. So it's like finding that, that middle ground. Um, yeah, I guess it's just like launching, iterating, um, and maybe, maybe, maybe only selling the year long program. I don't know. And letting people try it once for free all the time. And after they try it once, they can commit for the year um, or uh, not. So that I get that like reoccurring committed group. Well, I, yeah, I think that's a, that's a good way to go because trying it once for free is a no risk option. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and doing it in a way that, you know, unlike some of the software platforms that give you a th uh, 30 day or whatever it is trial, the first thing you have to do is put in your credit card yeah. and they rely on the fact that, you know, a lot of people, I, I yeah. would be surprised if it wasn't 80% of people who do that forget yeah. totally. to cancel before the trial ends yeah. and, and yet have no intent to continue using it. Yeah. So they get end up getting charged. I, I think that's just wrong. Um, yeah. So I, you know, if you do it the other way around, um, yeah. don't take any information, payment information up front. Say one's free, and then you do the follow up and say, okay, you've had your free one. The trial's expired, or the tri trial expires yeah. in in a week. Um, here's how you pay for the the you full program. Yeah, to go for the full program. And yeah. and if you can structure it, I mean the the. In the early days, I'd almost have special events for the trial ones oh. and just make sure that they're as awesome as you can possibly make them. Yeah. So they don't become routine. Yeah. You know, because there's a risk that if you're doing the similar, the same process essentially every time, that yeah. one, one of the events might be just a bit flat compared yeah, to the rest totally. of it. And if you've got lots of trial people on that, one particular event, it's uh, you're, like, you know, you're not going to convert many of them. Yeah, so if people sign up for free. The, the it's, it's literally like 50% of the number of no shows. I actually yeah. did a webinar mm. where 3,000 yeah. people sh signed up and 1,500 showed up. Now, 1,500 people showing up was amazing, yeah. but yeah. I keep thinking about the 1,500 who signed up yeah. but didn't show up. 
because mm -hmm. it's like if it's free, it's just like you know, I you know, yeah. you do that. It's like oh, it sounds interesting. You have good intentions, yeah. and and you yeah. do it. But I was just asking. There's uh, thinking. There are two markets. There's the public, the yeah. world, and then there's the brains community. Yeah. Do you envision like some offerings just internally within the brains community, and some things that are open to the public, whether paid or unpaid? Like, yeah, um, I've been I've been thinking about asking the brains like collective if you become a member of the brain if, if we'd all have to agree on this but um, like could there be a discount for all of us for first of all any programs that pick my brain launches for sure. But maybe within the network itself like brains get brain services for a discount because we're all members and the public place pays full price. Um, as another value add of, of being a brain. If you're, if you're sharing your knowledge and, and you're going to go access someone else who's sharing your knowledge, you know, as long as there's an agreement there that we all have that, I just don't know how to, um, I'd have to like go ask everyone permission of whether or not they'd be cool with that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there is, a, there is an opportunity to do that. How would you guys feel about that? Offering your services as a discount to this community versus the public? As a consumer, yes, definitely. And mm. as a producer, it just depends on the, the discount. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was thinking yeah. something like 15, 20%, like something uh, like that's yeah. enough to like make a difference. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you can have something like brain tokens where you can, people can buy a package and that entitles them to sign up for Wills or Jurgen's webinar yeah. at a discount. And, you know, brains can buy these tokens at a discount versus the public would pay, say, full mm. price. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I agree. I think that's a, a good way to go because then, um, yeah, I guess the you'd have yeah you'd have to structure a marketplace for the tokens almost. Yeah. Well, the the thing with the tokens, so we are building an internal wallet based system that will allow us to act kind of like a Federal Reserve, which is nice. We can inject money in our economy, or we can decide the value of a currency depending on where this this platform goes. So we're going to have the capability of that, which will be really fun to kind of play with. But in order to bundle effectively and in order to help drive demand to our marketplace, we need a certain level of standardization. Hmm. Um, so we're going to have, we have standard offers and then we have custom offers and the standard offers are going to be set both price and description as a, at a minimum. So standard offers think like a pick my brain call for 30 minutes for $50 or a coffee and conversation for 45 minutes for $75 or a private one-on-one. -on -one. Those are kind of three services that everyone kind of is able to offer without too much I feel like most professionals understand what that is. And so the service is really clear. Um, and that allows us as a company to be like, hey, do you want to buy 12 coffee and conversations up front? Um, and then you've got that in your account and now you can go browse. Or do you want to buy 12 private one-on-ones with these unique professionals for this price? Um, and you can go browse. But in order for us to do that, we need standardized pricing. Um, which is interesting. But it's still like kind of a paid lead gen. But you and all mm. brains would have the opportunity to opt in at this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we're moving to going forward is like when you'll log into your account uh, in October, you'll see the, the kind of standard offers that are the price is set, the description is set, do you want to offer this? Um, and if you opt in, you show up on the marketplace and then you're open to being able for us to be able to bundle you. Um, and then you can still build your own custom offers at your own rate rules and availability on your own terms. Um, but that will show up in a different place uh, because again, to make a searchable relational database with AI machine learning uh, organization, you need like this, like, it's like this fine, nice balance between standardization and customization that we're trying to find. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, yeah. Have, have yeah. When responding to these one, um, the 30 minute calls and uh, ha, ha, how have you found, um, are people sure. taking you up on that or, or other brains that you know about Have any of you guys, I haven't gotten any particular um, responses on that particular offer. Um, yeah, so I mean, in the first three years, it was really about um, helping the brains uh, build their profile, but it was up to them to kind of drive their own demand because we were building up our supply base. Like our marketplace isn't as, you know, it's just like that's stage two. It's like build your supply, building a marketplace is like the hardest startup to start ever. Yeah. So you build up your supply and, and we were kind of educating our brains. Like you have to let your, your network know that this is available because um, they know, love and trust you. And that that's the first people that are going to buy from you. And then it'll kind of extend from that. So the brains that are the most successful are the ones that are like letting their audience know. Um, creatively that they are available yeah. and they'll kind of build mm. up those, those revenue streams. And then there are some brains that, um, depending on their stack, like a lot of brains do the free call because they're selling higher ticket price offers later. 
Um, so they'll let their network know, like, call me, I'll tell you how I can help. And then they'll usually convert them to like buy 10 hours of my time or buy my, my custom offer. Um, but it's the sales call that will get them to that package. And that's the easy entry. Um, but again, those, those individuals are using their profile, um, you know, to, they're pushing it. They're like saying to their network consistently, hop on a call with me. Let's talk about where you're at and let's see if I'm the right person to help you. And if I am, here's my follow-up offer. And you've seen it before you enter that call. So, you know, um, so it kind of depends on, on people's purpose that they're using the tool for. Um, but I think if I go forward, like in October, we're building this internal wallet based system, this relational marketplace, a little bit more AI and these standardized offers, the onboarding process will become easy and, and the request to onboard into become a brain will be easier. Like, Hey, LinkedIn, uh, who out there wants to be available globally to be booked for coffee and conversations, just like a cool conversation, open yourself up to the world. Um, and if I get a, a hundred or a thousand people into that offer, now it's really cool to browse because it's again, imagine, like I keep saying, I want to build this like Amazon level marketplace where it's like, here are all the people in the world that are available for this thing that is defined. Uh, Cause right now our marketplace is very, you go to it and it is like, everyone has different offers, which is very cool, but it's a lot of learning. It's harder. It's not a, um, it's more difficult to drive demand there. Yeah. And if it's like, here are a thousand people who are available for this, this exact offer, um, browse away. So I think I we almost, have, I almost yeah. think of it as like a shopping mall, even though malls are going, uh, you know, Extinct. you drive, you park, you go to the mall and then you yeah. wander around, you stop off at the food court, you stop in the different you know, yeah. record store. I'm yeah. dating myself. There's no record store. <laughs> but, um, but I think that's, to me, that's the biggest thing. It's like, I don't, if I could, if I have relationships with potential clients, I don't yeah. really need pick my brain to generate that business. I just do it directly. Yeah. It's, it's when pick my brain is a source where people, you bring people in there, they find yeah. me there and then book me for business. That's where the, the value is to, yeah. From, yeah, from my perspective. Right. Yeah. So I, like to me, it wouldn't pay for me to send someone to pick my brain yeah. unless it was just like an easy thing. Just go there and sign up because it was convenient. Yeah. Um, for like just a coffee or something like that. So I think that's the key, you know, that's what I'm looking for is like, it, it should be a feeder for webinars for potential yeah. coaching clients. And mm -hmm. also yeah. I'm thinking mostly in terms of individuals, but are you also thinking in terms of companies, organizations coming to you and saying, pick my brain is our number one source for all things related to X? Working on it, yeah. Like, and again, like when we first built the tool, it was built under the Shopify model. Here is a tool that makes it really easy for you to have a website, have packaging, pricing, scheduling, invoicing, and payment. So it was just a tool. Then it became a marketplace. Um, but yeah, we're I, I'm actually pitching uh, Queens University um, uh, to onboard their alumni um, into their own marketplace. So I don't know about you guys, but like I went to university and I have no, they, there's no connection between my alum. Like they don't um, connect me at all. And so I'm making the pitch to these universities, like let's onboard your alumni into your own private network, uh, own marketplace and let the alumni interact, um, make them bookable. And they're interested in exploring Pick My Brain to onboard their alumni, their faculty and their students, and then pair it with actually dating, brain dating. Mm -hmm. um, to like mix it. So that would be, that's so much easier for us as an onboard rather than go to B2C and try to find a bunch of people and teach them how to build passion driven offers, which mm -hmm. takes some time. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the pitch will be, Hey, um, cause I can build one profile and templatize it very easy and onboard a thousand people into that one, that one template. So, Hey university, which, which of the offers would you like your alumni to be available for each other? Uh, we can pick a combination and we can make that marketplace private to them or public and private up to you. Um, so I'll, I'll see how that pitch goes, but that would be a nice, um, it'd be a nice win for us for sure. And then it becomes mm -hmm. that, that more shopping place like experience. Um, and not only will you be able to search for just like coffee and conversations, but like, Oh, let's check out Queens alum or NYU's alum if, if it's open and see the people there. Um, so that's I think that's a that's a huge market because I mean I'm thinking yeah. back and you know this is a long time ago when I came out of university and then I landed a job and essentially the the networking I I was able to do there as a naive young fellow was just meeting people in in the workplace and and yeah. identifying some people there who were mentors and in my first job there was nobody there that I really clicked with or that I respected enough to 
you know, take on board as a mentor. So I think um, mm. putting new graduates, for example, in a place where they can connect with people all around the world, other new graduates, other people experiencing the same thing, but also um, connecting with experienced mentors who yeah. are in yeah. you know yeah. vastly different fields who've yeah. lived and who, you know, they don't need to be in their workplace or in their yeah. field. They, they just have life experience. And if they find somebody, they can book a free call, have a 15, 20 minute call with them. If yeah. they click with somebody, then, you know, it could lead to an ongoing relationship that could add huge value. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I, I like that idea too, that not to, to connect with other alums, but to, if, if my university contacted me, say, here's this cool platform, you can contact all these potential mentors, that would be happy news. But the only mm. time I ever hear from them is asking for donations. <laughs> I guess money. Yeah, I that's know. right. That's it. And like Imagine Same here. said, you got an email that's like, hey, instead of asking for money, we're going to ask you to sign up to offer five, 10 or 20 hours of your knowledge every month. Which plan would you like? Um, and would you like to opt in to be available for calls, coffees or informational interviews? You decide, we'll take care of it. And I imagine, again, as a student, like wish I, what I wish I had as a student was like, along with my degree, every year I get 10 hours of mentorship from anybody. Um, I, like you said, outside of my field, outside of my country, um, instead of just like in my, you know, domain, um, that ability to go outside. Another opportunity, like NYU, every college has their career center, like NYU has the Wasserman Career Center. Yeah. People, like students go there and say, I want to work for Google. I want to work for, you know, NBC, yeah. whatever. How do, I, how do I talk to someone to find out what it's really like? Yeah. They could do a search and say, oh, Todd worked for NBC. Yeah. They could book time with me and say, you know, so the career center can actually um, link, you know, point people in that direction and say, yeah. hey, if you want to talk to someone who worked for any company in the world, yeah. to find out what it's really like, that you could pick someone's brain for a half hour at a minimal yeah. charge. And I would have loved that when I was younger and say, how do I, yeah. I want to work in television. I yeah. know, I don't know anyone who works in the TV industry. My What's God. the first step? Where do I start? Yeah. I didn't have someone's brain to pick, right? So that's a yeah. great mm resource that might be available yeah and that might be you know that's like i guess like right we're like trying all these initiatives to see what stick but that might be the way to go forward is just like get people to opt in for these services that again that like they're saying yes if someone reached out to ask me about my experiences i'm totally available at these rates um that are kind of set um versus uh, yeah like a asking people to come up with custom offers and and because as i'm learning people suck at selling themselves it's very difficult mm -hmm. Um, you know, not many people are good at it. So I'm like, okay, I got to like work with that human behavior, but, um, asking people to opt into a system like, Hey, are you available to offer five hours of your time to anyone who might want to learn more about your career? People are like, yes, I would love to put my hand up to that. Mm -hmm. it feeds into this larger mission, which is like, we're looking to offer like a million hours every year to students and pass that down. And we'll show you how your contribution fits into that global goal. So yeah, I think after this, once I do this university pitch and kind of see what their their mission, their objectives are, which again, it looks like from their, their website are, are very aligned with this vision that I have, that might actually be the easiest way for us to scale, get that standardization, get buy-in and ask the alums for more than just money. <laughs> yeah. So hey, I'm going to have to bail. I've got an, another meeting I've booked in for. So sorry about that. Uh, no worries. Um, I've, I've kept next week free, so we can, if we're on again next week, I'm good. Okay, I'll follow up if we want to do it, another one next week or the week after. Yeah, I can't right. do next week. I have it every other week, so I have okay. October 1st as our next one. At this, yeah, at, at this yeah. I've got so it. it before, before the brain uh, sourcing or whatever you're going to call it uh, thing, that would be yeah. before that, right? I'd uh, be yeah. after. So the, the, oh, after. Uh -huh. that, that one's on, that one starts at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Uh, Whose time? <laughs> yeah, uh, Pacific. So I don't know what time, what time is that, Japan? Uh, well, one Eastern. Um, okay, that's like 2 a.m. <laughs> so the first, yeah, the ones on the first are going to be at 10 a.m. and the ones on the 15th are going to be at 4.30 p.m. PST. All right, well, I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Um, yeah, sounds good. Sorry, I have to run. <laughs> That's okay. Thanks, Jurgen. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Um, Maxie, I just want to say one thing about the brain dating thing is that yeah. I would, you probably feel bad, but I would say one of my issues with brain dating was dating just sounds like a singles thing. 
In fact, I like I have them my calendar. Yeah. Like I was, I didn't want my wife to see I was doing a date yeah. brain dating. So it's just like, <laughs> heard. Yeah. Yeah, I so think that, all the married people expressed that they felt like yeah. I was like, I can't do so this. That's what I would say. Even though you were attached to that, and that was your brand. Yeah. I would say yeah. in some ways it's actually for the best. So I think you'll come up yeah. with something that's better that doesn't have that association. Yeah. That will be more professional. Yeah. And cool and hip and fun. Yeah. But just will not be dating. So I know you put yeah. a lot into that, but. In some ways, that might be for the best as well. I think yeah. it is actually, yeah. The contributions that we've got of like, I feel like we've got some names that I like even better now yeah, than, right. than than brain dating. So that's good to right. hear. And it was it was mostly the married men that were like, I feel uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <they're okay> to <laughs> know. Not that there's anything wrong with that. There's still a marketplace for people who are single. But you yeah. Want to meet other professionals? That's fine. But that's just yeah. You know, yeah. Not the not the yeah, image. Not as inclusive as other. Uh, yeah. Other, words would be yeah thanks for sharing that it's 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 common among i i've have had five other other married men that have expressed the same now that we're going to change the name we're like well, good because we felt <laughs> cared about it <laughs> i was like okay <laughs> yeah so that's good to know yeah. um all right so where do we go from here in terms of i had sent that email earlier with some of my ideas for the live event the webinar and the package idea so what are your thoughts um, yeah um, yeah, so a live, I think, I think a panel event with all of us as me as a moderator would be really fun. And I think I'm thinking the common theme again of us that keeps coming up is like, yeah, future of work, East, West, uh, or future of education rather. Um, yeah. we've got, we've got some professors, we've got educators, we've got masters in the room. Um, so some kind of fun hour long panel with the four of us and, and a conversation that would get some, that would, we feel would be like alignment aligned with all of us. I think that'd be really fun. Mm -hmm. um, here's, a, here's a thought. What about what do you think of the, about the future of professional development or personal development? Education. I like that. Seems associated. It seems academic. It seems like the future of colleges and stuff. So I know this is your ideas. Like after that, where do you go? So this is really yeah. about your personal and professional. So it's really about the future of personal and professional development. So I really education like that. Has, yeah, I, I think that's. Um, I think that's great um, because I think what's coming up in a lot of people is like, um, yeah, how do they develop professionally, and where are these soft skills? Like, soft skills are becoming more uh, like um, craving. Like, yeah, people are craving more soft skills. Don't know where to get those soft skills. Um, so we could build in that. Maybe we could all make some points of where we think the future of professional development is going, and I can just guide it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's a great topic, Todd. Um, and like I've had people who had MBA, MBAs from Harvard take my leadership workshops and they said we didn't talk about any of this stuff the soft skill stuff it was all about strategy and finance yeah it's like doctors who go to medical school and get nothing yeah. around empathy or bedside manner right? like, yeah 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 yes. ah that's, yes wow that's yes. powerful yeah I like well, that. you know I like the idea also Todd of emphasizing visual thinking uh, not only because mm -hmm. you you've got a great yeah. brand around that but um, I, I was just thinking of how that has inspired me teaching online. And I came up with three mm -hmm. things that I, you touch on in your book, but show and tell. I mean, uh, that is just, mm -hmm. you know, have some object or physical thing and then talk about it. And, and I find it's a great way to teach. And I ask my students to do it and I find it's very difficult for them. Mm. They, 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 they don't really get the process of show and tell. The, th the second thing is before, after comparisons. So I'll have them do an exercise and they get, uh, Okay, try this. Now do a little intervention. Now try it again. And uh, it's just so clear. And then the third thing is stories and metaphors, which yeah. is a, uh, yeah. a no brainer. <laughs> but um, it's all visual thinking, even though it might not involve any visual, um, actual visual imagery. It's yeah. just doing it, you know, demonstrating. Yeah. Well, I actually, I actually, the other day, did a work webinar where we talked about the differences between think, um visuals that you see with your eye and visuals that you hear with your ears. So just like you're saying, uh, like when you talk about storytelling and metaphor, they're auditory in their visuality is what they said. And the uh, other ones you take in with your physical eye, but it's still, if you, if you picture it in your mind's eye, it doesn't matter whether it comes, which, which you know, orifice it comes in through, for lack of a better. Or uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should have said which sense, but. Uh, yeah, which sense, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I did a, 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 a demonstration. I was, you know, I have to teach Aikido online. That is such a challenge because you can't physically touch anybody, right? And one of the things that in, in the physical reality of Aikido, everybody tries to force it. So let's say there's an arm that's coming, chopping down on you. You just let it go and then you have great power. But if you try to force it, then immediately it resists. So I, so how can I do this when there's no partner? 
So I had the students um, hold their arm out like this. You can even try it and try to push your own arm down. It's really easy to resist. Well, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing my Superman shirt, so. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's really hard to, to push your arm down, right? Yeah. Well, what the founder of Aikido said, you should never place any more weight than just like the weight of a towel. So you just take a little cloth or something on your, uh, on your arm, which is like a cushion, and that softens your approach. And then suddenly you can just go down. And that actually works with a, another person, no matter how much they resist. Sure. If there's this little layer, as opposed to direct collision. And that was just a, I, I mean, what do you think, Todd? I mean, that's just, that's to me, great. that was just go and tell. And, yeah, it's uh, but, great. It's, it, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I'm always looking for that. Like, how do you replicate the in-person experience virtually, right? What are some of the things, like yeah. in the next session for my NYU class, I always did a team building exercise that involved a puzzle, but I can't do that because we're not in person. So I need to come up with, you know, a substitute that achieves the same learning objectives, and yet we're not physically together. But I just want to say about the show and tell. I did one with my students the other day that I, I said, three uh, find three objects in your in your space or around your house, something that you love, not not the person, not like here's a picture of my kids or my wife, but yeah. something yeah. that you love, something yeah. that makes you laugh, laugh or smile, and something that you're proud of. And it really gave people a chance to, wow. so I said, you know, something I love is, you know, baseball. I love the Yankees. So I had my little, uh, I said, I also love ice cream, which is what this came in. So this is actually a two for one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had, you know, I have like one certificate over here. I showed that. So it was just, it gave them a sense of pride. It shared something mm -hmm. about themselves and they had a lot of fun with it. And even if you don't have all three, even if you just had one, that's fine too. But everyone was able to, so I had everyone running around their house or apartment trying to yeah, find these somewhere. things. And it was great. It really got. What were the three? Something you love, something you're something proud you of. Something you love, something you're proud of, and something that makes you smile or laugh every time you look at it. Wow. Okay. And did you break them out into breakout rooms, Todd? After to present? I didn't for this one, but I've done that. That that is another way. That I haven't not this time, but previously yeah. I did that. Yeah. Okay. So everyone. Because then they can really share in, more intimately, yeah. like what yeah. the why behind it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I like that. I, I had a small group. It was only twelve students, so it was easy to go oh, around. Nice. Rooms. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's intimate. But yeah, for break, that's a great breakout group activity. Yeah. How, do you find uh, people, um, maybe this is just Japan, but do you find people reluctant to show their vi their face on video? Like Some do. You have to create psychological safety where people feel comfortable. I I, don't, I haven't had that issue because that's, we with my class, we come up with guiding principles. And, and I talk about three of these, visibility, voice, and value. Are you seen and how are you seen? Are you heard and how are you heard? And are you contributing? If you do not show your face and you do not speak, then you are not visible and you're not, you know, yeah. we can't hear your voice. And in that way, you're not adding value. And I say one of the, the guiding principles of the class is the success is based one third on the content, one third on my teaching and facilitation and one third on their contribution. So mm -hmm. if they do not all contribute equally, then you're only yeah. getting two thirds of the value of what's possible. So just by framing it that way, all of a sudden the, ca the cameras come on and people. <laughs> hey, I'm here, right? It's like we don't we don't care how your hair looks, we don't care what your background is. It's like yeah. we just you know. Here. So if you set it up that way, even a lot like 80% of my students are from Asia. Um, I have China, I have Taiwan, yeah. no one from Japan this semester. But yeah, there is a hesitancy about huh. you know there's more introversion in those cultures. But th those I, are the ways if you frame it that way, you're going to get more. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's helpful. Yeah. Well, you know, I have uh, students again from uh, Taiwan and Japan and Hong Kong and so, uh, as well uh, as some European countries. But uh, a lot of the things I do, I have to have them stand up so I can see full body or see their movements so that I can yeah. coach them. Right. And this one guy uh, from Taiwan, he was really hesitant. And, that, and I, I, it didn't seem to be a shyness thing. I couldn't see. And so I said, well, could, could, you, could you stand up? And he's like, well, I mean, just stand up so I can see you. And he says, I don't have any pants on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what you have to like let people know in advance because a lot of times, yeah. yeah, a lot of times I'm, I'm dressed up from the waist up, but uh, yeah, <laughs> the Zoom suit, right? <laughs> you know, I, was on a, I was on a Zoom call with this guy the other day. It was like a business call, and mm -hmm. and it was before he's doing a podcast interview with me. But he literally was wearing a dress shirt and boxer shorts, and he went to show me something and forgot. So he literally got up. He was wearing no shoes, ah. boxers, no pants, and it's like. It didn't even like, I'm like, hello. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
maybe that's how we all get closer. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, we're seeing it a personal, like, it's like, maybe Zoom is more intimate. One of the yeah, NYU uh, faculty members, kind of class, right? <laughs> one of my NYU faculty colleagues, we were having a discussion about how to handle some student issues. Um, mm -hmm. One was this girl calls uh, this young lady, she, she's in bed, you know, under the covers with her laptop on her lap. And, oh, then, and not just necessarily appropriately he's like i didn't even know how to address that like you know yeah. so that's the opposite of will's problem with people turning on their cameras. <laughs> yeah, like, too yeah. comfortable too comfortable not comfortable enough <laughs> and one guy was smoking a cigarette and drinking a beer it's like and you're uh -huh. like you wouldn't do, so one of my guiding principles is do not do anything at home on a zoom class or call that you wouldn't do if you were in the physical class yeah. we know you're yeah. at home we know you're comfortable you don't yeah. have to get dressed up but it's just respect for your fellow students and your professors yeah. No man. Well, the the my my strategy, which is maybe similar to your visibility, voice, and value, uh, is I said <clears throat> there are three ways that you can online that you can gain um, access to resources. One is reading, whether it's articles or books or excerpts. That's the kind of traditional way. Um, another would be videos or documentaries, mm -hmm. and then another would be podcasts. And these are all great, and you could do as much as you want. But I have no idea. You tell me you read it, okay, but I have no idea how to evaluate based on that because that's all input. Mm -hmm. So right. I can only evaluate based on output, which is writing, the equivalent of reading, mm -hmm. and, and then also um, visual illustrations. So I have people make visual notebooks, you know, illustrated visual glossaries, and then oral presentations. Uh, otherwise, what? how could I compare yeah. or mm. evaluate? And that, that yeah. seems to click for them. Yeah. I like that. I like book. Like, I mean, I loved book reports as a student, right? Read a book and then present what I learned. If I got to do that with podcast, man, my learning would just like skyrocket. <laughs> I love that. I want projects after everything I read. I wish I had a teacher that made me do that. And then you double up the learning actually on my year on. I took this year on when I quit my job and started to pick my brain. And, and we spent a month in Maui reading all the books that I didn't have time to read. And my wow. partner did too. And we actually like chart, we all both wanted to read 10 books while we were there and they were both different books. And we put it on a schedule in Excel and like how, to, how, how much we had to read every day. But every time we would take a break, we'd go into the ocean and he would describe what he was reading and what he was learning. And I would describe what I was reading. So I felt like I actually read 20 books. Yeah. Also really read my books because I had to explain it to him what I was reading as I was going through it. And I was like, that was the best, like that was in my life, the mm -hmm. best time I've ever consumed knowledge yeah. ever because i got to constantly share um, and then hear someone articulate back their book i was like that was the best like, where is that program yeah yeah <laughs> that's, that's what we yeah. say in my class it's like you know reading it like you said the input is just one thing it's the discussing yeah. it. can you explain it can you know, if someone says oh i know what i mean but i can't explain it then you're not really that clear on if you can't explain it you're not that clear on what it means so yeah the ability to teach my students you know we always do teach backs we always have someone say you know if someone was wasn't here last week how would you explain the passion and skill matrix uh -huh. to them and have uh -huh. them get up to the whiteboard and actually draw it and the fact that it's visual they're able to reconstruct it from memory in a way mm -hmm. that they couldn't have done if it was just text-based so again that reinforces the power of, of visuals and models and and that's that's a fun class already. I was just imagining as you were saying that like for a class to like, um, again, just be coached. Like if, if you're like, okay, Max, I want you to visually describe anything you want to this class on something mm -hmm. you've learned on your whiteboard. And at the end, I'm going to critique you and tell you how to, you could have made it stronger. Yeah. Um, so I'm like coming to the class thinking of something I want to visually communicate, um, having to do it, which is a lot. And then having that feedback of being like, you know how you could have made that, that emphasis stronger is through a metaphor. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. But like the, uh, the ability to do it. Cause it's like, where else do we get that, that opportunity to like display our ability yeah. to teach too. That'd be fun. And you're developing a practical skill that you could use in any context in your yeah. future. Right. So totally. yeah, I was on a, I was interviewing on a podcast the other day and we were talking about my book. And she said, I love the passion skill matrix. Can you explain it to our listeners? And we were, even though we were on Zoom, she was only going to use the audio. So I, I couldn't draw, I couldn't get out my whiteboard to hold up the picture. So I literally had to reconstruct it from memory and explain it. And the upper right quadrant is this, and the lower right quadrant is that. So it kind of forces you to, you know, do yeah. things like yeah. that. And that, that's a skill that anyone could use in their professional life. Because yeah. you're on a sales yeah. call, you're yeah. talking to your boss. I mean... I love that. Those assignments to me are like the most applied. All right, Max, uh, describe something visually using only your words and go. I'm like, okay, here we go. Like, you know, like I have to like yeah. output, like you said, not just regard, not just intake. 
but like I find the follow-up output exercises are not as like I'm like want more of them yeah. <laughs> I need more of them yeah here's, here's a question for both of you but I'm writing a blog post on this if if you uh, listen to an audio book and someone said did you ever read that book can you say yes did you read it or, or, <laughs> or not I would say yes <laughs> because to me read means consume <laughs> okay. Yeah, so yeah. you can say I consumed it, I experienced yeah. it, I but reading is a very specific thing That's that true. technically you did not. It's like if you yeah. read The Godfather and saw the movie, yeah. uh, you, didn't, you didn't read the novel, you no. saw the movie, right? You wouldn't yeah. say I read That's The Godfather true. if you saw Marlon Brando in the movie, right? So That's it's true. interesting. So it's, yeah. it's kind of, I'm kind of exploring not just the semantics, but just in terms of how the brain processes if it's a different experience. Because mm -hmm. like my book, the visuals are so crucial that if you yeah. listen to it, you experienced it and consumed it, but you didn't see the models. You may not have filled out the exercises. So, and I'm yeah. finding that when, because I'm listening and reading your book, right? I have the Audible when I bike, and that's when mm -hmm. I listen to it. And then I go, the book is gorgeous, so I just like mm -hmm. go back to the book and refine. So I'm like doing both experiences. So I'll let you know which one, like the combination. It is different. That's true. Yeah. But I, I, I was, uh, you, you said there's an audio version, so you get to listen to a sample. And uh, oh, yeah. uh, although I love the book and I thought I would love the audio book, uh, when I didn't hear your accent or New York accent, yeah. uh, yeah. I'm not sure not I want to, because there's this disconnect, cognitive dissonance yeah. the whole time. Mm -hmm. That's not Todd. That's not Todd. Not Todd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, listening to the audio, but my wife can't even listen to it. She walks out of the room. She's like, shut that off. Because the uh -huh. guy's saying, he, it sounds like Mr. Movie Phone Guy, right? When I was a kid growing up in Queens, no one yeah. from yeah. Queens ever sounded yeah, like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I could have at least found like a New York someone from New York with an accent to read my story. <laughs> or you. <laughs> yeah. But if somebody doesn't know you though, that yeah. might not be an issue, you know. But yeah. we know you, so that yeah. it's true. It's harder. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it wasn't until I got the book in the mail, which I still need to see my post about that, I was like, oh, I see. Like this is, of course, I need. Like if I'm reading a visual book, I should probably get the book. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, it's pretty pretty. Thank you. Um, There's something in, I don't know if this is only in Japan, but it's called Read for Action. And, uh, and that's R-E-A-D, by the way. <laughs> uh, and, and they, they um, have you uh, bring a book or they bring a book. So everybody has a different book and you get like three minutes, really short time. You browse it as you would in a bookstore. You might look at the table of contents. You might read the, uh, the, the pre preamble, uh, the back cover, just absorb whatever you can, whatever attracts your eye in three minutes, write it down and then share that with the group mm. and you put it on a post-it so it all goes on the wall as well and it's just really That's interesting fun. and then you mix yeah. the books you get the same book by a different guy and it's totally different yeah yeah That's um, great. That's yeah great. i like that yeah. um okay so well, what's, our next, what's our next step other than that we're meeting in two weeks from tonight same yeah. bath time yeah i was just gonna say do we want to just um make the next session the panel of the future of professional development and and kind of just film it next session or do we want to talk about it first and then and then film it and go through it well, i was gonna ask is that something we want to do live with an audience like mm -hmm. with people actually there and make it like a q a kind of thing or is that yeah, something maybe i think so actually probably, That's probably. I, I envisioned it as live. I mean, we could record it but i envisioned it kind of like a you invite the brains and yeah even charge five dollars a person or something minimal just yeah to, just to get um, yeah. some buy-in okay yeah. i could do but that I think that I think if we market it properly, there's enough yeah. value there that, and, yeah. and then so, and we could even limit it to like, you know, 50 people or if you want 100 people or whatever, but it would be nice yeah. to field questions. They could comment in the chat and really make it, it's good yeah. exposure for all of us. And it's a good way for us to, again, share our thoughts on that topic. And yeah, yeah actually, I think well, that's I'm, a good idea. I like the, the, the interaction. With, um, with doing the recording, uh, just as long as we have the structure and maybe, you know, that uh, there's how many minutes and yeah. maybe what the questions are, but otherwise we can just, you know, improvise. Okay. Do you guys want to, for the next session, I'll, I'll I can take a first stab at, at a, like a, a first draft outline and we can kind of all add, go over it next session and then find a date and time That's to do really it. Good. Yeah. Okay. I will send, uh, I'll take the first step and just like structure it, but I love the idea of the future of professional development. I think we're already selling tickets. It's like, right. Good. So that's nice. Um, so yeah, next point. session, we'll dial that in, go over it all together, solidify it, and then we'll figure out when we want to launch it. And okay. do it? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. That was effective, efficient. Yeah. And what are your thoughts in terms of, like, if I was going to do a 90-minute visual leadership webinar, for example? Yeah. What, like, what's the best way to make that happen? To do that? Um, yeah. I, like, again, I think... Um, 
I think it would be easier for me to, I haven't, I haven't started uh, marketing to our brains, different offers yet. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting until our tech is like, until I've got a system a little bit to do that. Like I can send a blast out for it, but if you're looking to do that, like, would you want to share that with your network as well? Or do you want to just yeah. do that for the brains? Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. A lot of people in my network, including say former students and yeah. I said, you know, let me, now that I have my email list, yeah. that's something I can send out as a blast and say, Hey, I'm doing my, you know, I'm doing a visual Nine leadership minutes. workshop for anyone uh, who's interested. And it could be yeah. 60 minutes or 90 minutes. Either one is fine. Um, if you're okay. willing to, to double up on the promo, like right to launch it, I'm yeah, wh whatever you need support with, like if you want the, the packaged on, on through pick my brain and delivered it so people can grab a ticket that way and limited, mm -hmm. uh, we can do that. Um, and I can help promote it as well. Um, that's something we could, when we do our panel event, that's like, if we each have something that we want to promote, yes. you know, you could, that's yeah. a great chance to have a, you know, capture a you know, captive audience and say, yeah. oh, for more of Todd, Will, or Jurgen, this is yeah. what they have coming up on the pick my brain calendar and we yeah. could be ready with that one webinar. Or if yeah. we wanted to do the three part thing we had talked about, yeah. we can bundle it. We could bundle it and say, you know, you could get one, one, any one of the three, or you could buy the bundle of all three. Yeah. Um, and then that they don't have to be like in 90 minutes or an hour, they could be 45 minutes. Right. So you can buy yeah. like 45 minutes of Todd of Will and of Jurgen and, um, yeah. That could work if we could, I think we'd, we'd want to relate it to the professional, future professional development, which, yeah. visual, which visual thinking obviously does. Um, and then we could ask Will and Jurgen what they would. I think that would work too. I think that'd be actually nice because if we're all going to display um, ourselves talking about this, hey, the action item to this is, yeah. let's add some credits. Um, okay, I'll add that to, let's, let's fit that in for our next two week call. We'll do the outline of our live talk with interaction, decide how many people we want to attend and how we're going to blast it. Um, and one of the call to actions of that event to take place would be, um, these three credits from which, which master classes we're also going to host that will, um, support the professional development where we see it going. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Perfect. Okay, I'll take the lead on that. I'll add it to our Google Doc. And um, yeah, we've got it in our calendar. Hopefully, Will, you got that that calendar invite for the first? No, I, I didn't. I don't, I don't know why that's happening. But um, okay. But if I get the email, I can put it in my own calendar. So that's not okay. a, an issue. Um, so it's so the it's first the for us, it's the second for Will. Yeah. Yeah. Same time, right? Same time. Same yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Same link. Okay. Four o'clock. Same link. Yeah. I'll, I'll send an email. Uh, I'll do what I did today. If, if you didn't get it and just like outline what we're, what we kind of agreed on today. Does that work? Yeah. So that works. Yeah. Perfect. Well, okay. Sweet. Efficient. Great. Good Nicely job. Pat. Done. Nice Pleasure person. working with both of you. Right before yeah. five. Two. Yeah. Let's keep it on track. Cause then I think we'll have energy to come back. This is good. Um, okay. Yeah. Just let me know if you guys, yeah, I'll just add the, anything else that we need to but, touch on. I think that's it. Can I just share one real quick success? Yeah. Uh, I was taking a, um, I'm taking a, a, a podcast, uh, dream guest challenge from a lady named Nancy Jutten mm -hmm. and we just kind of finished it. And one of the things she said was that you need to be proactive and finding, uh, the podcasts and, and, and try to guest yourself on those podcasts. So, and, and she gave us some links of all these li lists and, and I couldn't believe how many podcasts there were of people, oh, you know, trauma survivors and, and, you know, oh, I used to be this and I lost the weight. And I, I couldn't relate to any of them. And I thought, mm. my gosh, there's so many um, people that they couldn't get on regular media, but they, they can get on, they can make these podcasts. Right. Yeah. And I was getting a little bit discouraged and I thought, why don't I just search a single term that I'm interested in, like Ikigai, which is a, pur a purpose of living, yeah. and Ikigai and podcasts. And bingo, the perfect podcast came up. There's a guy in Australia who had lived in Japan, and he's interviewing all these really top people about it, and he's got a really new perspective on it. So what I did was <clears throat> I listened to a couple of the episodes. Yeah. I wrote him a five-star review. I bought his his um, his ebook, and then I, I contacted him saying, you know, telling him that I had done that and saying I would love to be on this podcast. Uh, and that was Sunday night. Okay. So how long do you think it was before I heard back from him? A few minutes later. A few hours. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, it was night, right? It was yeah. in the middle of the night. But I mean, the, there was an email in my, you know, no. and then he said, we need to talk. And because uh, the next opening will be in October. So early October is when we're going to do it. It definitely had me on the show. And he said, we need to talk when you're available. I said, well, you know, Mondays, Fridays, Saturday, Sunday. And he goes, how about today? <laughs> so it was so fast. <laughs> we had a great conversation. So 
Amazing. You know, when you reach out in the right and way and you demonstrate interest in what they're doing. Um, Always. Like, so you yeah. just give me a grid because I, I never really search for visual thinking podcasts. I've been on a few, but I haven't really searched for it. And there's a lot out there. People design thinking, visual thinking, like who, yeah. Yeah. who has a built-in audience for what, for my book, right? That's the perfect um, match. That and leadership, but leadership is very broad, but the visual yeah. thinking thing is very specific. And I think my, I already got two, but I think this, if I, I'm going to look in, I'm going to find others along mm -hmm. those lines. Do, do you know Sonny yeah. Brown? Um, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, cause she, I don't blurred my, she blurred my book and. Uh, uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she has a podcast, but uh, she'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I should follow up with her and see how she's doing. That is yeah. a good idea. I should just Google podcasts that talk about the passion economy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I mean, got it's a tool a that supports it. Might as well go talk to the audience that loves it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and those, those links stay on forever, you know. Yeah. And so you can you can reference people to them. It's just yeah. great podcast. Did you do fun. yours with uh, Nick uh, with yeah. Gallo Giovanni? Yeah, uh, Gio. Uh, yeah, uh, Gallo. Yeah, Giovanni. That was really really fun, and uh, it's coming out in early October. And we had a great great time, and uh, I thank you so much for that. That was. Um, because that that took uh, I don't know if you know who who we're talking about Maxine but he he's he has a, a podcast on compliance which sounds like mm -hmm. a dry topic but he's definitely not a dry he's the uh, ethics guy the ethics expert oh, okay. yeah the ethics yeah. experts yeah and so I I approached uh, well the, what we talked about was bushido which is the way of the samurai and ethics in the code of the samurai and how that could apply to modern life. It was really, really a fun discussion. Yeah, yeah. So I had and been I on that podcast because someone else introduced me to him. And then when he talked about ethics and I saw what, what, what Will was doing, I said, the samurai thing's like a perfect East-West yeah. match. And this guy just happened to be interested in that, right? And he was, yeah. uh, you know, that was a perfect, perfect. That's match. great. This is just confirming the more we know about each other and our passions, the yeah. easier we can read, we can absolutely bypass. It's just like, go here. <laughs> Yeah, and, I'm, yeah. and, I, and Jür, Jürgen is having me on next Wednesday. Nice, nice. nice. On his, on his podcast. Are, It'll be are, all three of us. Has it been recorded already, or is it you're just doing the recording? And We're doing ready. the recording next Wednesday at five. Okay. My time. Cool. So we can include that. Outside, yeah. I can include. We can include that in our. I mean, follow up. Like, here's some mm -hmm. links of other of other conversations about all of us. That's cool. I love that. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. Dinner time. Dinner time yeah. in the Big Apple. Sounds Thank good. <laughs> okay, thanks guys. Right, talk to you soon. Yeah, sounds good. Bye. Bye. See you.